to another problem in code forces contest time db forces the problem is number factorization so let's quickly see what the problem states so they are telling that uh, you have an integer n and you have to consider a pair of integer arrays a and p uh, then of the same length a and p are of the same length and they are telling that it is the product n equal to the product of pi means product sigma means summation okay product of a i p i a1 power p1 into a2 power p2 etc and a is the product of some distinct prime numbers let's see with this for example they told that n equal to 28 can be written as 2 square into 7 power 1 that means 2 is a1 here the above exponent 2 is p1 here 7 is a2 here exponent 1 is p2 here they represented it as a equal to 2 7 the base values here and p equal to 2 1 that is p1 p2 which is p1 p2 here also 28 can be written as 4 power 1 into 7 power 1 right that is what they give a is written as the base values a1 p1 a1 a2 and p is p1 p2 that is 1 1 they are telling that the first pair is correct that is a power a1 power p1 this 2 power 2 into 7 power 1 is correct but 4 power 1 into 7 power 1 is wrong why because 4 equal to 2 square is a product of non-distinct prime numbers that means what 4 can be written as 2 into 2 right here they clearly mentioned ai is the product of some distinct prime numbers here these are prime numbers but 2 and 2 are not distinct so this value 4 power 1 into 7 power 1 since 4 is eliminated 4 power 1 7 power 1 is not valid now our task is to find the maximum value of ai dot bi that means a1 p1 that is summation of a1 p1 plus a2 p2 etc over all possible pairs of a and p note that you do not need to minimize or maximize the length of the array length of the array can be anything both can be equal uh, both should be equal but size can be increased or decreased it's our wish the only thing is we have to maximize this how do we get this this a1 into p1 plus instead of this powers now base into exponent base power exponent you have to do plus base into exponent plus base into exponent you have to convert the factorization part to this format so that the number will be maximum so i'm pretty sure like this is uh, quite uh, there are a lot of things here so let's try to understand with the help of an example that will be more clear let's take the example of 100 so here n equal to 100 right this can be written as 10 square and since this can be written as 10 square uh, the rule says that we can take the product of it that is 10 twos or 20 but 100 can also be written as 5 power 1 into 2 power 1 into 5 power 2 in 5 power 1 into 2 power 1 right so 5 twos are 10 into 50 into 100 so when i apply the second rule since I got the factors, I can apply the second rule now. This is a1, this is p1, means a1 into p1, that is 5, plus a2 into p2, plus a2, a3 into p3. Similarly, the last one. How much is this? 14. So, this is the method, like you can prime factorize in any format, but the resultant value should be maximum. Here in this case, it's 20. Let's take one more example, that is 10. So, if n equal to 10, uh, what can we write? We can write 10 power 1. Very important thing which I missed is you can write 10 as 5 into 2. Five. These are two prime numbers. So you can write it uh, 5, 2, 2, 20. Suppose 20. 5 into 2 into 2. This is not possible because 2 is repeating. Here 2 is not repeating. It's all prime numbers. So this is possible. I'll take uh, base into exponent. It will be 10. But this can also be written as 5 power 1 into 2 power 1. So this is what 5 into 1 plus 2 into 1 that is 7 out of this 10 is the maximum value. So if you observe one thing there are many factors right you can do 10 square you can do 5 uh, suppose you can write it like 5 square into 2 square also any factor. So how do we derive to a conclusion on which uh, method to take for that uh, let's assume simply let's assume that by observation we say 2 power 10 is approximately 1000 it is 1024 and it can't be factorized but just for approximation let's take 2 power 10 as 1000 what is 10 power 3 10 power 3 is also 1000 now we, if we apply the second rule what did they say base into exponent that is a1 power p1 is a1 into p1 you get 20 same here 10 into 3 is what 30 from this you see that for all values make sure 
the base is maximum so let's say uh, n value is again like 300 300 can be factorized to 2 into 2 into 3 uh, into 5 into 5 right I can write like this but in order to get the maximum value what I need to do I need to make sure the base is maximum base is maximum means I can simply multiply everything and I can put 300 power 1 but that is not possible if I do 300 power 1 it will have multiple prime numbers duplicate prime numbers repetition of prime numbers is happened that should not happen uh, the a value should contain only distinct prime numbers so how do we take it optimally like greedy approach now we'll take 5 here and 3 here and 2 here into we are just grouping it we'll take this 5 and this 2 this 5 and this 2 5 3 is a 15 15 twos are how much 30 into 10 so both uh, we take the p value as 1 here so what did we do from the atomic values from all the prime factors that we can't divide that further we tried to group the distinct prime numbers maximum distinct prime numbers here 5 into 3 into 2 into the balance that is 5 into 2 from that we got the valid numbers as 30 and 10 then what are we doing as per the question we have to multiply this and sum it that is 30 into 1 is what 30 plus 10 into 1 is what 10 so the answer is 40 the value for maximum value is 300 is 40 uh, so how are we going to count this uh, we just want to uh, segregate these into different buckets based on the count and based on that using map we'll be able to multiply it so i'll show you the code so this is the sub that solution and you can have a refer if you want to have a copy so now we'll try to trace out the example of 300 through this code now let's say uh, the n value is 300 and i'm using a map called ma ma is have two things so map has two right key and have value value i'm storing the prime number and uh, key i'm storing the count of prime number how many times that two happens how many times five happens like that okay now we have a counter variable that is initially c equal to zero then i equal to two what is n 300 300 mod 2 equal to equal to 0. I am just prime factorizing it. I hope that most of you might know prime factorization. If you don't know, please watch another video so that I don't want to keep it so lengthy. If n by 2, that is 150, 300, right? If I divide by 2, it will be 150. It is divisible by 2. I am keeping 150. I am checking whether ma dot count of 1 exists. So already I incremented c as 1 here. I'm checking whether ma dot count of 1 exists. It doesn't exist here. So I am adding ma of 1 and equal to i. i value is what? That is 2. Now again I increment. 150 mod 2 equal to equal to 0. Yes, 150 mod 2 is equal to equal to 0. Then I am incrementing the count. Count value becomes 2. I'm checking whether the count of 2 exists or not. It doesn't exist. So I am adding 1 here and keeping 2 here. Now again, uh, 150 became right 150 becomes 75 and i do 75 mod 3 equal to equal to 0 uh, 75 mod 2 is not equal to 0 so i increment the i then it becomes 75 mod 3 equal to 0 by that time c becomes 0 here 75 mod 3 is 0 c becomes 1 uh, then n by equal to 3 75 by 3 is how much 25 and ma of 1 c is 1 right 1 already exists what i'm doing is ma of 1 into equal to 3 that is 2 into 3 now I got 25, 25 mod 3 equal to equal to 0, no, so I increment again 4, 25 mod 4, no, again I take 5, 25 mod 5 equal to equal to 0, by that time C becomes 0 again and C becomes 1, 25 by 5 is how much, N value becomes 5 and uh, how much is this, not uh, MA dot count of C, right, this is uh, MA, how much is this, uh, C, right, C is 1 and uh, 1 does it already exist here, yes it exists so i'm just taking the product that is ma of c into 5 again i'm doing 5 by 5 5 by 5 will be 1 c becomes 2 5 n will be 1 here then i'm checking ma of 2 exists or not ma of 2 exists i'm product putting the multiplication by 5 so what did i basically do 
300 is a factor of 2 into 3 into 5 into 2 into 5. What I'm doing is I'm just segregating this to different buckets. So 5 is in one part, 5 is in one part, 2 in one part, 2 in one part and 3 in one part. So that my base value will be maximum keeping in mind that uh, the prime factors will be distinct. So once everything is done, this is just the prime factorization logic. So we don't have to consider here n is already 1. Now I am iterating through the whole map. I am iterating through the whole map here. What am I doing? I am just summing up this. So 2, 3 is 6, 6, 5 is 30. Already the value is 30 here and already the value is 10 here. So I am just summing it. Sum is 30 plus 10 is 40 and that's how you get the value. So again, uh, the first thing that we are doing is we are taking a number. We are trying to prime factorize it everything. And since I told like the base value should be maximum, when can a base value be maximum is uh, the prime factors should be distinct. The maximum prime factors you can take a product, the base value will be maximum here 2, 3, 5. Then similarly, you keep on doing the same approach for all the numbers in the array. Then what happens? You take the second value in the map, then you try to sum it after the product is done. And uh, that's all. If you have any doubts, uh, Please let me know in the comments so that I can help you. Thank you.